Well, because of the um, quality of the zoom on my camcorder, I thought I'd give this another go using the mo old mobile phone for you all. Let's see how much modern tech defeats old tech. So, as you can see, this is the box art. It's very, very sleek and stylish, very reminiscent of the original. You can really see how they've done all they can to replicate that very 90s aesthetic with the black and the checkerboard. It's great to see that style to it. Flipping it over, they've even got the old classic. Here are all the games you've got. And I can actually do a proper sweep here using this cam just to show you the sheer variety of games that are actually available for it. Now, it's a real surprising list in some ways. There are some games here that aren't included, like Sonic 3, Sonic 3 Knuckles aren't there. There's only the one Streets of Rage game. Um, Revenge of Shinobi's not on here. None of the classic racers like Outrun or Hang On or Super Monaco on are there. But at the same time, we've also got the likes of Earthworm Jim. We've got the likes of Road Rush 2. We've got Mega Man The Wily Wars. And, of course, we have Castlevania FM Bloodlines. Oh, yes. So with that in mind, let's take a closer look at the unit itself. Now this is where it's going to be a bit tricky because I'm doing this one-handed. First of all, micro USB cable. Uh, you don't get the actual plug for it, you only get the cable. Most of us don't somewhere have an old mobile phone or a charger of that kind, so you might as well just use that plug. It saves a bit of space. Personally, I would have liked the USB-C plug rather than the micro USB. Having got a Google phone this year and having a USB-C cable, I can see it's going to be a lot less wear and tear over time because instead of using the two-pronged teeth, you have both sides of the slot kind of like a USB, which is a bit, well, it's essentially like, exactly like the USB. So you can see how you've got both sides on one thing. USB-C allows you to flip it either way and take the wear off. That would be nice for future-proofing it, but never mind. Pulling out further, let's say this is where it gets a bit tricky using the old mobile phone. This is one that's been sealed. I've got one that I've actually opened previously, so it's better to use that one to show you this. Uh, one handed work. Very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. But here we are, so check this out. This is the original controller design. In Japan, they get the free they get the six button rather than the free button. It's very frustrating that we over here in the, in the UK have been given this instead, especially considering Street Fighter 2 the Champion Edition is on the console, and being able to play that with six buttons would really bring it to a new level. However, at the same time, you can apparently use the likes of 8-bit Doze, FC30, or SNES30, six button controllers and it will actually work perfectly fine without any firmware or hacking i've not tried that but if that's the case that's a very big welcome find and i will say again the quality is good you can hear the clicks there the only thing i will say is if we get right in close there is a little gap between the d-pad and the edge there and i'd like that to have been filled a little bit more but you can really see it's nice fluid motion Easily run your phone over it, and it's perfectly fitting in, this, in, this, in the size of your hand. Check it out. And I can't show with both hands here, but you can clearly see that easily snugly fits in the palm. And it's still a very comfortable design, even after all these years. <laughs> now for the part I'm not looking forward to. Trying to actually do the final unboxing. This is rather tricky, but I might be able to make this work if I am very careful because again this is a brand new piece of kit and I don't want to break it is it going to come out is it going to come out yes it is and well look oh sorry about that almost dropped my phone there and that meant I almost dropped the unit as well so there we are inside the plastic wrap I'm going to try and unwrap it for you as I say, one-handed unboxings are very, very tricky. They take a lot of effort. <coughs> Especially if you don't want to break the unit. But here we are. Just look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It's a completely new unit. It easily fits pretty much in the palm of your hand. You see two USB ports at the front. So that's where you can not only plug in the actual controllers, but also the, the more modern ones if you have one. You can see quite clearly you've got the power button is the old-fashioned slide it on, turn it on, and that, turn it off. 
Reset button is actually a hard reset, so you hold it down, and what it'll do is bring up an option where you can either do a save state, or you can actually, as well as that, basically go back to the main menu. The slide for the headphones, it does work, but it's purely for a visual effect. And as I mentioned before in another video, you can actually pull the plastic off. I'm not doing it because I don't want to damage it. And you can, in Japan, apparently, you can buy a 32X to go on the top there purely as a visual design. In terms of style, it's incredibly lightweight. It's very, it almost feels too lightweight. But if we take a closer look at the design, you can see they've really brought the classic design back of all the ridges and the edges. They've even got the retro style logos underneath for the old serial numbers and everything else, including the plastic printing on that side of it. It does have the battery slot on the side, but it doesn't actually work, so the expansion is not possible as far as I can tell. And even if I get right up top, high definition graphics, stereo sound, and that's exactly what it has, unlike the original Mega Drive, which was outputted in mono. So in short, this is the Sega Mega Drive Mini. It looks absolutely fantastic. And the key question now is, how did the games play? We'll take a quick jump, and I'll show you. So here we are, we've actually got the system hooked up here and captured, and as you can see, there's a vast selection of games here. We've got the likes of Alex Kidd with Space Harrier 2, The Thunder Force 3, Golden Axe, Son of the Hedgehog, Strider, Castle of Illusion, Columns. Going further down, we've got the likes of Kid Chameleon, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Echo C the Dolphin, Road Rash 2. Moving further down, Streets of Rage 2, absolute classic. We've got some this first Shinobi game, Shinobi 3. We've got some true excellent classic Street Fighter 2. And then the more surprising ones like Castlevania The New Generation, aka Castlevania Bloodlines. So we've got some real great games here all across. And the music in the background has been composed by Yuzo Hoshiro of Streets of Rage 2 fame, and it's essentially recreations of the classic soundtracks from other games. But one amazing feature that this game, this system has, is you can change the languages to Japanese. But watch what happens when you do. When we get back to the main screen, the whole thing has completely changed look. All the box art has become the Japanese, and the games have also become the Japanese ones. So Bear Knuckle 2 is now there instead of Streets of Rage 2, for example. And another great choice on this is that Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bee Machine is no longer available as an option. Because in Japan, that game instead was the other puzzle game, Puyo Puyo. So you can see it there on the left hand side. And to give you an idea of just how different it is, let's fire it up and take a quick look at this old puzzle game. We've got the rest of them down at the bottom as well. So you can see all the different box arts, even there's look at Vampire Killer. Instead of Castlevania Bloodlines, Castlevania The Next Generation is simply called Vampire Killer, after the legendary whip from the Balmont family. So you get a real sense of how much effort they put in that you've technically got two totally different versions of the main style, which is superb. So going into Puyo Puyo then, we'll take a quick look at this. Actually, all the text is now in Japanese. And you can see when you play a game, you get this lovely little 4 3 setup with a bit during the background of Sonic and some stereo stacks. You can choose to make it widescreen if you really want to. I've got some more display of that later. But this is just to give you an idea of how different Puyo Puyo is to the Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Of course, all the text in Japanese. I've not translated those yet, but the idea is simple. You take it on competence, and here you go. So instead of looking through the eyes of Sonic and seeing the robots, you've now got the anime characters that you're up against. The gameplay is exactly the same. So you've got to try to get the beans in certain ways, build columns, and if you get the columns to the right level, you can drop down objects on your opponent. I played this once, I wasn't very good at it, so this is just some raw footage to show you the difference of that. So it's definitely something that's a lovely little feature, because it technically means you don't have 42 titles in the Sega Mega Drive Classic, you actually have more. Already in Sporty 3, if you count Puyo Puyo as its own game, and then the alternate versions, they do have differences. For example, in Europe, the Contra game that we have was known as Probotector, and it was all robots. If you put the Japanese version on, you get Contra back. So that takes it technically up to 44 games. 
So it's a really major package in terms of value, the games that you get. It's actually superb. Now, keeping on a Konami and on a Sega Mega Drive related note, I want to show you something very interesting involving Castlevania The Next Generation, aka Vampire Killer. So as we see, in the fortress of the outskirts of the ruins of Castle Dracula, we're here for Castlevania The Next Generation. This particular model I'm playing as John Morris, who's the replacement for the Belmonts. It was like exclusive to the Mega Drive one. Now this game, I will say it's not as good as Castlevania 4, because the whipping in multiple directions is a lot more awkward. Rather than using the full eight directional approach that you could do on Super Castlevania 4, here you can only really whip in diagonal directions up when you're jumping, and then you can aim directly down beneath you when jumping as well. But essentially, the game is very much a classic Castlevania. It's 2D, it's very hard work, it's difficult. And one of the real challenges for this is just how difficult the game is. You can see that when zombies hit, they're basically going down, they're going to smoke, and they're kind of like collecting in green kind of mush. Bad standard for the genre, really. All very nice, very pretty, very different soundtrack to what you're used to hearing on the Nintendo version. Of course, this being pretty much a unique one. A cartridge version of this in the, in the UK goes for anywhere over £100. Now, therefore, automatically, we're finding ourselves in a much better position. When John disappeared then, by the way, that's not to do with the game, it's to do with my capture box when I have it up. But what I'm going to do now is take advantage of the ability to load and I've actually saved the Japanese state. So watch what happens here. Same hallway. So I'm playing as John Morris again, but watch the zombies when they get down. Check it out. Uncensored gore. That is right. We have censorship between the UK and the Japanese. So there's automatically a reason to play the games, because you may find something you never knew was censored in gaming. I have no idea that they took out blood in the European release for this. I've never actually played it before. All the footage I'd seen online suggested it was one of the more difficult Castlevanias, and having played the first level, I can kind of agree. It's got a different kind of mechanic to it. The way the characters move around isn't quite the same, but overall, a lot of fun to play, and a great inclusion. When I heard that Castlevania blood Lines of about the next generation of Vampire Killer. Va what, what a great title of a name that is Vampire Killer. Bring it back to Batman Whip. All I'll say is I was absolutely overjoyed because I'd seen the game, as I say, for over a hundred notes. There was no way I was paying it. To be able to play it anywhere I want now with the Mega Drive Classic, this all by itself makes it worthwhile. But speaking of crossover games from the Nintendo era, Hell really froze over with the next inclusion. Oh my god. Is it real? Are we really going to see this? There it is, Mega Man 2. Yes, unbelievably, one of the games included here is Mega Man The Wily Walls, and essentially, it's the first three Mega Man games which were initially on the Nintendo only. They finally come out on the emulated so It's the first time this has ever happened. It's not featured in any of the previous released Mega Drive collections on the PC, on the PC, on the PlayStation 2, PlayStation 4. It's never had this collection before. So, for those of us who even never had the chance to play it back the day because Nintendo wasn't so big over here, or if you simply not have the chance to play them at all forever, well, you can see already looking at the footage of me playing this, I'm totally out of my depth. It's a lot harder than I thought it would be, but I had a lot of fun playing this game. And the fact that they managed to, Sega managed to bring Capcom into the fold to bring over Mega Man is a real achievement. And of course, I mentioned it earlier, I've not captured any footage of the game, but Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition is also on here as well. And that will mean that you can have some classic 2D one-on-one -on -one fighting boots with your mates. If you've both got anything like those 8-bit dog controllers, you can have two-player with a full six-button setup. Otherwise, you can do the old-fashioned way like we did back in the 1990s, and you can actually be able to do it with the three buttons and having to switch between using the star button. Not very convenient, not entirely fun, but either way, still a wonderful pair of gems to see these on here. Mega Man on a Sega console in 2020. Well, it was officially 2019 when this came out, but that's not the point. It's a complete miracle, it's awesome to see, and a real welcome surprise to be able to play this legend once again.
So taking a brief break from the games for a moment, I want to show you something in the settings here. Because as well as changing languages, you can change the screen. It's set to 4 3 default. You can stretch it, but I don't recommend that. Because all the characters look very much widened. They, all, they just don't look natural at all. And with that lovely backdrop, um, you can also choose the checkerboard one if you want. or have it black. Personally, I love having the little funky speakers and sonic silhouette there. I think it adds a real sense of flair and colour. But another option you just saw me select then was by pressing the C button you could activate a CRT filter. What that essentially does is allows you to put the game like it's in the 1990s. Let's choose something really colourful like Comic Zone, for example. A game that's renowned for its artwork. Here's how it looks in Scanline mode. You can see already in the logo, it looks gritty, it looks grungy. Maybe with the grey on the hand, it actually looks okay. But then, In the scan lines, you see to rob the colour from the story, it really loses its pop and its visual flair. So here we are at the intro. Um, I've left this in in full, it's waiting to get a good look at this. Um, because you can see there, I mean, it does still look kind of cool, but at the same time, I don't know if I really want to see it for a long period of time playing it. It just doesn't feel 100% natural to me. It used to see such high resolution, especially with the background behind it, you know, where you've got the nice colourful speakers of Sonic Silhouette, and then this grainy, dingy looking overview for the game. So, for me, while it's nice to have this feature here, it's a bit... Again, it's, it's one of those, I think for purists who really want it, it's there, but, I mean, I'll give you an example. If I quickly bow out from here, I'll be able to show you just how much of a difference it makes. So here's the version without scan lines, and automatically, even here with the black and white logo, it seems to look a lot clearer. You can really see a lot more of the pop. I mean, that logo looks amazing, and then the title screen, look at the difference there. The colours just stand out so much more, it looks so much more vibrant. And then, the, looking into the game itself, just look at the difference, it's absolutely beautiful. You can really appreciate just how colourful and how stylish the game is. So this is obviously one where you'll really notice the difference between the CRT filter and the regular game. But for me, I don't see the point in using the CRT filter. And what's really annoying is, unlike when the Bahabros made their Acura adapter for the Sega Dreamcast, where you could have basically output via a HDMI cable directly and not use a VGA box, they actually put a scanline filter in and had a nice little switch on the side, which you could just turn on or off whenever you wanted. Here, not so. You have to back out to the settings and change it. It is defaulted to being without the filter. I'd strongly encourage you to leave it alone, but if you are a purist and you want that gritty 1990s squint effect to your game, then the option is there for you to bring back the 90s in that way and have some fun with it. But realistically for me, the best way to enjoy these games is in the highest colour fidelity possible, and that's what you should be really doing here. Having lots of fun taking in some of the greatest games that are available for this system. So overall then, we've seen a vast selection of classics which have been covered as part of this process by Sega. How does it compare to many of the other classics? Well, first of all, in terms of sheer volume of content, this probably blows them all out of the water. We've got shoot 'em ups we've got beat 'em ups we've got platform games, we've got puzzle games, we've got unreleased exclusives, we've got one-on-one -on -one fighters, we've got RPGs by the bucket load. RPGs-wise, they've really gone to town with the likes of Fantasy Star 4, Landstalker, Light Crusader, Shining Force. It's really good to see so many on here. We've got the likes of Street Fighter 2, Streets of Rage 2, for you guys who like to get on the streets and cause as much carnage as possible. We've got Kid Chameleon, if you want a real platforming challenge. You've got Toe Jam and Earl. We've got Sonic 1 and 2, which both play absolutely fabulously and flawlessly. We've got amazing soundtrack, amazing presentation, and the price, $64.99. For that, each game is coming out at literally around about £1.50. And as I said before, considering Castlevania Bloodlines, New Generation, Vampire Killer, is anywhere between 65 and 150 notes, 
the fact that you're able to get it on this system and play it without any trouble is just absolutely wonderful. It's worth the price of admission by itself. The fact you can choose the Japanese option to get the Japanese games, to play the likes of Puyo Puyo, play the likes of the Bare Knuckle 2 where the characters have got slightly different changed names, different storylines potentially. You've got the uncensored version of Castlevania Bloodlines. It's absolutely superb that this is all presented to us. I would say, I've found that it easily fits inside a rucksack. I had it in there along with a Total Beach headset and a load of other stuff with no problems. Meaning if, like me, you're going to be on the road and you want to have something to do in your hotel room other than watching really boring television or sitting there twirling your thumbs, you can sit there with your mates instead, have a few drinks, have some fun, go on the rest of your night as much as you like. I can certainly see this going with me to the likes of Play Expo, where in between playing the real life arcades, playing the real life consoles, being able to sit back at night, take it chill, relax, enjoy it, get some sleep, absolutely. Compared to the PlayStation 1 Classic by comparison, that was £90, so it was more expensive by nearly, nearly £30, and that had a half the titles, and of the games included, yes it had Final Fantasy 7, yes it had Metal Gear Solid, yes it had Tekken 3, but it had the 50Hz PAL ROMs, which as far as I can see, this does not have. As a test, I actually played Sonic 1 on both the Japanese and the English menus, and I did not see much difference, or at least I couldn't see any discernible difference, in terms of speed. Anyone who's played the PAL version of Sonic 1, all you have to do is look at the opening to Springyard Zone and hear how different the music is to know just how slowed down the UK and European version of that game particularly is. So in all, do I recommend buying this? I'd say yes. I initially said when I heard about these mini consoles, I was like, who are they for? You know, people who've got the consoles are going to have the original consoles, and people are possibly going to use like emulators on tablets or things like the, I think it was the Retron 5. Why would you want to have the original mini console? Well, first of all, it's a lot smaller than those, so it makes it perfect for on the go, and it's also nice to have an actual collector's item that you can use. How many times have you bought something like an old Sega Dreamcast, like an old Sony PlayStation, and you find that certain games don't work, certain controllers don't work, the, so the way it all gets up, the cost of the collection as well. As I say, I've already touched the Castlevania Bloodlines, but Streets of Rage 2. A box one of that with manual is going to cost you about 20 notes. I have no idea how much you're going to pay for the Mega Man Wily Wars collection, because I've never even seen it for sale. You know, Puyo Puyo importing that from Japan, that's not going to be cheap. So all these games together, it's going to definitely show that this is the kind of thing that's worth picking up on. And I heard one of the other reviewers saying that this is the best of the mini consoles that they've played. I've had a go on the SNES Mini Classic, I had a go at that at one of the Leeds Unleashed cons, and while it was fun, it didn't really feel as fluid as this, and it certainly didn't look as cool. I do love all the little touches they got for it, I like the fact that you can actually buy on-board decorations if you want, them, if you're in Japan anyway, to make it have that extra visual flair. I think the collection of games they've gone for is really balanced. Would I like to have seen a couple of more on there instead? Like, for example, Salile? Yes, I'd have liked to have seen Salile on there. Would I have wanted to play the Revenge of Shinobi? Yes, I certainly would want to play the Revenge of Shinobi. I would have definitely liked to see a couple of more games that didn't make the cut in that respect. But I think overall I'm happy with the releases, especially with the surprises, with the likes of the version of Tetris, which never even officially came out because of the licensing issues, uh, the new version of Darius, which is nice to see just for the, just that it's been made, for whatever reason, that's really cool. It's cool to be able to play um, a version of Sonic 1, Sonic 2 at proper speed and frame rate, which Again, if you've, got, if you've got the Mega Drive collections on the likes of the PS4 and the likes of the Xbox One, it's probably not going to be something you'll want to immediately buy, because those games you can get for around about £20, whereas this is three times the price. On the flip side, you don't also get the features like the Rewind or the Mirror version of the games, which are on those too. So there are a few things that having that version of the games works in your better favour. It's your decision, really. But for me, I really appreciate having this. It's nice to have that collection. And I'm going to enjoy playing this as much as I can, both in my house and on the road. And I strongly urge you all to do the same. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it's give you a good idea. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. And I'll see you all next time.